morning, everyone. Welcome to the Vetiva Breakfast Meeting, brought to you by Vetiva Capital in partnership with Frontier Africa Reports. Um, at this time yesterday, the NBS released the Q2 GDP, Q2 21 GDP report, and today, um, Ibuko Amoyani, our economist, will be taking us through um, that report, along with thoughts and outlook for um, the next quarter or the next two quarters. Following this, we'll be hearing from our from Simbiat Bada from our Global Equities Desk as she takes us through um, some equity markets across West Africa. After this, we'll hear from Amorege Ogogo, who is the fixed income analyst, and he'll be taking us through the performance of the Nigerian fixed income market, as well as the currencies market. Um, at the end of that presentation, we'll have time for questions. So if you have any question and you prefer to speak, you may raise a hand and would allow you to speak. However, we're also live streaming on Facebook. So if you're joining us on that platform and you would like to ask a question, um, you can send your questions in the comment section and the questions will be read out here. We'd like everyone to know that this meeting is being recorded and may be shared with third party listeners. So straight on to the Q2 GDP analysis, we have Ibuko Amoyani. Good morning, Ibuko. Good morning, Shima, and good morning, everybody. So just like you have said um, yesterday, the National Bureau of Statistics released the GDP result for Nigeria. The outcome was largely in line with our expectations as GDP expanded by 5.01% year on year. While this was our best performance in about seven years, um, Nigeria was unable to recover all the ground it lost during the pandemic last year, despite the absence of um, lockdowns in this current year. So we saw that this was primarily as a result of the oil sector, which is yet to come out of the recession. So we, no we noted that due to OPEC production cut, as well as the um, drop in demand from India, which is our major trade partner, and also the origin of the Delta variant that actually resulted into um, lower oil volumes. Be beyond that, we also have operational challenges ar around oil production, which actually subdued oil production. So on the brighter side, on the brighter side however, we noticed that um, there was a huge comeback in the trade sector, which made the sector contribute more than half to GDP growth. And that made the sector to insist the ICT sector as the major contributor to growth. So prior to now, we've been seeing the ICT contribute about 100 billion to growth, but with the recovery in the trade sector, it's, it's contributed about 500 billion to growth, and that was actually significant, and paid, paid off. It paid off for the um, contraction in the oil sector. We attribute the recovery in the trade sector to favorable base effect, as well as the reopening of the land borders. We we'll recall that in December 2020, all four land borders were open not just to preferential players alone, but to other players. And that actually boosted trade in Q2. Growth in the ICT sector actually slowed to 5.6% as a result of the restrictions on mobile SIM registration over the linkage of um, SIM cards with na national identification number. So we also, we also saw that um, road transport recorded a 92% year on year expansion making it the fastest sector to actually recover from the pandemic induced recession. So other sectors that actually performed well are the power sector, the real transport sector, as well as the coal mining sector. Um, just as we anticipated, insecurity challenges led to slower growth outcomes in the agricultural sector. The manufacturing sector maintained its resilience, riding on the gains in the food subsector, which contributes more than half of manufacturing outputs. Meanwhile, the, sec the next um, top contributor, the textile subsector, recovered barely by 2% compared to the 40% it lost during the lockdowns last year. We attribute this to the weakness of the Naira as the major hand with that subsector. We also saw um, mild recoveries in real estate and construction, which is possibly as a result of um, weaker capital expenditure spend on account of um, rising subsidy and debt obligations. Following three quarters of um, double digits growth and a slowdown in growth in Q1, um, the financial services sector recorded a contraction as the wholesale business environment has resulted in higher risk premiums by banks and that has stifled credit growth. So despite the fact that we have an accommodative stance on the CBN, 
uh, we've seen that the maximum lending rate has increased significantly, and that could actually um, reduce demand for credit. Going into Q3, we actually see the economy growing by as much as 4.1% compared to the 3.6% contraction, which we recorded in Q3 2020. And this is primarily because of the expansion in the trade sector. And we also expect the ICT sector to, um, to record double digits growth because of the removal of restrictions on mobile SIM registration. We also expect a solid rebound in the transport sector, which rebounded by about 78% in Q2, as well as unrestrained activity manufacturing sector. We recall that even as a Q3 last year, there were some restrictions on man hours. We expect this base effect to actually support growth in manufacturing sector. And just like we have said earlier, the lifting of um, restrictions on mobile SIM registration and the reopening of the land borders are the key catalysts we look, we look out for in Q3. However, we note that there are headwinds from the oil sector, given the infrastructural challenges, which could prevent the sector from meeting its quota, albeit the, the low base from the previous year, as well as the easing of open production costs could actually provide a reason to cheer, given that there is headroom for growth if such if, if short infrastructure challenges are, are tackled. Um, looking at some oil data, we discovered that the oil, oil, oil output for July was about 1.4, as compared to the average of 1.6 in Q3 last year. So if we see further improvement, we could see some growth in that sector. While we, we, we anticipate a stronger rebound in Q4, we have now adjusted our full year estimate to 3.36%. And we note that um, this, this um, optimistic growth outlook could ride on um, other expansions, trade, ICT, agriculture, manufacturing. Another activity sector actually declined. And we actually expect that um, um, decline to actually persist unless with a mild recovery in Q4. So that sums it up for our expectations for GDP and the summary of the GDP result that was released yesterday. Over to you, Chima. Thank you very much, Ibuko, for the summary and analysis. Um, just a quick question. Is there any update on a possible rebasing of the um, GDP? And what are your thoughts surrounding that with the current progress or status? Well, interestingly, the UN recommends that GDP be rebased every five years. We know that such um, that there'll be an activity in 2022. We will see more data on that. Also, given the fact that South Africa is currently rebasing its GDP, Kenya has also rebased its GDP. So it's actually a positive development so that we can capture um, other things that are in the economy. Because since 2010, a lot of things have changed in the Nigerian economy. So we believe in 2022, we'll see more, we have more details to talk about as regards to the rebasing of the GDP. Okay, thank you very much, Ibukum. Next, we'll be hearing from Simbia Bada as she takes us through some um, West African markets. Good morning, Simbia. Uh, good morning, Victoria, and good morning to everyone. Uh, we, I'll be reviewing some of the equities in market, like she mentioned, um, across West Africa, and I'll be starting off in uh, BRVM. Uh, BRVM recovered slightly by just one business point. Uh, yesterday, uh, with year to date return now at 20.22%. We had the likes of Palm Cordova bounce back by 7.4% after posting loss in previous session. Uh, Why Sukova and Benabe extended their um, upward trend. Uh, we saw investors take profits in NEI Cordova after having um, eight straight days of gain. Activity level traded mixed with uh, the session closing with more losers than gainers. Uh, going into today, we expect the market to close the week uh, slightly negative as uh, we still see possibility of profit taking to occur uh, while market breath stay negative. Uh, in Ghana, the composite index closed down by 42 basis points due to price depreciation in MTN. Uh, which was the only loser in that session. In the session, uh, the market saw decline in activity levels, uh, with Cow Bank recording the highest volume of traded shares, um, followed by Echo Bank and MTN. 
uh, going into today, we with increased um, sell side pressure, we expect the market to close the week negative, uh, barring any major price appreciation in the large cap names. And like we've always mentioned, for any of our listeners looking at exposure of these markets, they can reach out to us via email at dealingadvertiva.com or to our sales team at salesadvertiva.com and we'll get back to them. Um, finally, over in Nigeria, the OSHA index closed up by seven basis points uh, on the back of increased buy side interest in stocks like Etana. Uh, the oil and gas company gained 9.97% yesterday, which would be its second consecutive gain uh, following the statement um, stating Preline Limited acquiring 60.98% stake in the company. Um, however, we do not have information as to what, what price the previous shareholders existed at. Um, other counters that gained in the session were Oniflower, FBN, and um, Access Bank. Uh, speaking on activity level, as expected, market traded mixed uh, due to uh, the lukewarm investor sentiment we've been seeing currently. And on a positive note, uh, market breadth turned positive with 25 stocks seeing a price appreciation while 14 declining. Uh, going into the last trading session of the week, we expect the markets to trade in similar pattern, uh, closing the session mixed as investors continue to favor small to mid cap names. And also, um, as we've seen rates uh, moderately declining in the tre treasury bill space, uh, deciding investors might turn their attention to fundamentally sound names in the equities market. And on a final note, Guinness Nigeria um, released its audited um, full year 2020 slash 2021 results. Uh, and uh, speaking on the highlights, uh, revenue grew by about 54%. Uh, profit for the year also saw a significant turnaround uh, from the 12.5 billion loss posted last year, which was largely on the back of high um, operating loss from their impairment lines. Um, so a 1.2 billion profit this year, and that's about 110% growth um, in the profit line. Um, the counter has recorded a 63.16% year-to-date return. And we'll be watching closely to see how the market reacts to this news. Uh, thank you, and that'll be all for my end. Thank you very much, Singet. Next, we'll be moving to Amari Gay on the fixed income market. Good morning, Amari Gay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Supported by the FAC inflow that came in yesterday, system liquidity improved significantly to open at about 258.1 billion positive coming from the 80.29 billion negative that was recorded on Wednesday as a result of the significant improvement in system liquidity, interbank rates moderated by over 316 basis points as OBB and overnight rate both closed at 10%. For our expectations today, we believe that the interbank market will trade at a higher levels on the back of um, a possible CRR debit by CBN today. The parallel market lost one era yesterday to trade at 522 Naira to a dollar, while the earning window opened at 411.23 Naira to a dollar. The highest trade that was recorded yesterday was um, 413 Naira to a dollar, while the closing rate was 410.88 Naira to a dollar. Brent and WTI both gained 0.2% to open today at 72. 71.23 and 67.58 dollars per barrel, respectively. The TB's market traded on a relatively active note yesterday as supply from the NTB primary market auction flooded the secondary market. We observed interest majorly on the newly issued one year paper, that's the 25th August 2022 maturity. We also saw slight interest on some mid dated maturities, especially the January and the February maturities. White trades were majorly consummated on the newly issued one year paper, the 25th August 2022 maturity. Overall, average benchmark will remain unchanged at 4.8% at the close of yesterday's trading session. The OMO market trade on a relatively muted note yesterday. <coughs> Sorry, as um, market players focused on the OMO auction that I had yesterday. At the auction, the DMO, the CBN rather, 
allotted 60 billion across the three tenors, the same amount that was offered, offered with stock rate remaining unchanged at 7%, 8.5, sorry, 8.5% and 10.1% respectively, while average benchmark rate in the secondary market rose by about five basis points to close yesterday at 5.92%. Um, and the bonds market, um, it's open to a very bullish session. But however, we saw um, the we saw improvement in offers across the benchmark curve as the trading session progressed. The most sought after papers yesterday were the 2026, the 2028, and the 2036 maturities. White trades were majorly consummated on the 2024, 2026, and the 2050 papers. Overall, average benchmark rates rose by about four basis points to close at 11.76 yesterday. Um, following the release of the Nigeria second quarter GDP report of about 5.01, percent growth year on year yesterday. We saw rates moderate across the Nigeria sovereigns. The most notable moderation was seen on the Nigeria 2049 as offers on that maturity dips below 8% levels that we have seen in the past trading sessions to settle around 7.99% levels. While in the corporate space, it was relatively quiet. For our expectation today, we believe that the current um, quiet sentiment in the bonds market, we persist as um, investors continue to cherry pick attractive offers across the benchmark of why in the TB's market, we expect it to close the week on a very active note as players try to book profits on their NTB winnings. That'll be all for first thing from. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amarigi. Next, we'll be hearing from Justina as she takes us through some other headlines across Africa. Good morning, Justina. Good morning, everyone. We start here from East Africa, where Absa Bank Kenya PLC has reported a strong increase in half year profit after tax, surging 846% to 5.6 billion Kenyan shillings. The strong performance was largely driven by growth in interest, interest income, particularly in the SME segment. Now, retail and SME bank KCB Group has completed the acquisition of BPR, that's the Bank Populate do Rwanda, from Atlas Mara Limited. KCB is now the majority shareholder of BPR with a 62.06% stake in the London listed financial institution. Now, over in Uganda, where Bank of Uganda plans to increase the paid up capital requirements of financial institutions in the country in a move that could make it harder for locals to start banks and also lead to measures among the small financial institutions. According to the bank, it says the move will trans transform the sector and align it to regional pairs. Now in Southern Africa, a number of earnings came through yesterday. Woolworths Holdings reported a full year, re full year results of 212.5% jump in headline earnings per share a turnover growth of 9.7% and declared a final dividend of 66 cents per share, lower than 89 cents declared in the previous year. South African miner Sibanye Steel Water, water more than doubled its half year profit to $1.71 billion or 25.32 billion rand on the back of strong precious metal prices. It also declared a dividend of 8.54 billion rand for the period. Um, drinks maker Distel says it will conclude talks with Henneken about its takeover offer by the end of September. It also says it would only pay dividends if talks with the Dutch brewer ended unsuccessfully. Um, we move on to um, Zimbabwe, another part where re revenue for Citco Limited is expected to grow by 59% in the 2021 fiscal year to about 7.5 eight billion dollars from 4.77 billion dollars and that's according to analysts at IH securities and this is premised on the fact that the growth will be sustained by a combination of strong seed demand public sector programs and good weather in the northern african region egypt is setting up a 1.6 billion dollar company for the production of methanol ammonia and petrochemicals um, and also we have Mubashir Capital, who is planning to list on the Egyptian stock exchange within the next three years. 
It also plans to invest 350 million Egyptian pounds in new products and expansion through a five-year plan. In Morocco, the Department of Economic and Financial Forecast has predicted that the Moroccan economy will grow by 5.8% in 2021, as the government speeds up, speeds up its recovery plan for the 2020 from the 2020 recessions. And that's some of the headlines we have here from across Africa in Frontier Africa reports. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Justina, for those updates. We have come to the Q&A segment of this session. If you have any question for us um, and you'd prefer to speak, you may raise your hand and we will um, allow you to speak. Also, if you do not wish to speak, um, you can use the chat box option or the Q&A functions respectively. Um, finally, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can send your questions in using the comment section. I see that we do not have any question for us today. We thank everyone for joining us in today's session. We hope that you have a very productive day ahead and that you enjoy your weekend ahead as well. We hope to see you at the same time on Monday. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning.